All right, hello everybody. This is project number five, the Mozart engraving. And the idea behind this one is to make it look exactly like the original. So be sure to print this out and we'll go through all the details right now. So I've got the directions here and the score and uh, you'll wanna have finale open. And uh, the first thing, score setup, pretty easy. You'll be doing a grand staff or piano. So we're doing a one page uh, Mozart engraving. First new thing on the agenda is how to write chords. You can do this in speedy or simple. If you do it in speedy, click here. I'm gonna make this small, a little bigger so we can see. You can enter the bottom note of the chord uh, by uh, how you enter it on the keyboard. And then to add other notes, you can go back, put the entry carrot over the chord, and you can double click in the line or um, staff where you want it. I can actually use the, to be more exact, I can use the up and down arrows to get it where I want it. And then you double click with the mouse. That's one way to do it. If you don't have so many chords, which this piece doesn't, that's pretty efficient. If, you know, later you enter a lot of chords, a faster way is actually with the simple entry. You can go and enter your first note, and then you can use the number keys on the number pad to enter the interval above. So in this case, we have a third, so I'll push number three, and then a fourth above that. If you're doing something like uh, guitar chords or a lot of chords, this is much faster because you can just stack your intervals with the numbers and you don't have to double click in the score each time. So that is a couple ways to enter chords. Uh, to enter rests, I think I've showed this before, uh, enter the value that you want. So this is followed by an eighth rest. So I'm just gonna put an eighth note there and then uh, use the arrow key to go back to that note and push R. And this works whether you're in simple or speedy. So you simply, like if I wanted this to be a rest, just push R over the note. One of the specialties in this assignment is the ornamentation. So these will all be done in the articulation tool. It's the whole note with an accent. And there's some specialized things in this example. So for example, the second line, there's this little uh, Batman looking kind of thing. That's a mordant. We also have uh, staccatos, which is common. We have a whole measure of staccatos over here. We also have the trill sign. And we also have the very beginning that this is a sign to show you to roll the chord. So it's a roll. And what I like to do with articulations that makes it fast is there's shortcuts for all of these. So let me just delete the one that I'm going to put in. Uh, if you hold down, for example, M on the keyboard and go to the note where you want to put an ornament, so hold down M and then do you see how this little arrow points to the note and I click, it'll put a mordant. Same for if I hold down letter S, S is for staccato, hold down S on the keyboard and then click, it'll do a staccato. You can of course uh, click on the note and go fishing. You can kind of search for what articulation you want, but it's a little bit easier to know the shortcuts. You can see the shortcuts in the selection box because there's a little letter. You can see M here for mordant, T is for trill, uh, this is a down bow for the violins. If you ever did that, D is for down bow. So there is a logic uh, to a lot of these. Let's see if we can find another logical one. A is for accent. So those are really nice if you're doing a lot of articulations in a score. Uh, let me show you how to do grace notes. These are a little bit tricky because uh, we have to enter a note and then turn it into a tiny little note. So you'll look in the second line, second measure. 
there's a little tiny grace note. Actually, we can look at it over here. This is a, right here, this little grace note. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna enter uh, the note. So it's a little D. And the first thing you wanna do is in Speedy, you're gonna turn off in this menu, turn off jump to next measure. Cause we wanna enter a note and we don't want it to bother us with jumping. It's still probably going to tell us that we've got too many notes, but that's okay. So we're going to enter, it looks like this is a 16th note. So we're going to enter a D on um, right before. And it looks terrible. Don't worry about that. It'll look all weird and it'll say, what's wrong with you? Then we're going to go back, just click OK, that's fine. We're going to go back over that note and we're going to push semicolon. So it's the one right next to the letter L on the keyboard. We're going to put the carrot over that note and push semicolon. That turns any note into a grace note. So it's that's a little bit, it's not the most intuitive process for making grace notes, but uh, it's that's the easiest way to insert them. So you enter the note. Um, if you enter this in real time as you're going before you complete the measure, it won't bother you about having too many notes. So you can think about that too. Uh, there's one place, let's do this one in the second measure of the third line. We have to enter two grace notes. So let's try the same thing. We're gonna, this B's already jumped off. So we're gonna enter a little tiny A and then a little tiny B. And then fine, click out of the measure. And then we're gonna go back over these notes and push semicolon over each one. And now we have two little grace notes. You'll see in the original over here that the beams are joined. And to join, or they're, they're not joined here, but we need them to be joined. So the shortcut for that is to push backslash so you go to the note uh, after, so it, it always joins the note before it. So go to the second note that you want to join and push backslash, and that will join them together. We'll be using that backslash again for some chords down at the bottom. So that is grace notes. There is a custom expression in this one. So down here, uh, zoom out a little bit. In the third line in the beginning, we have a turn with a sharp. And this is just a very specific um, kind of classical ornamentation thing. And this marking does not exist in Finale. So we get a little practice now. Finale is a really powerful program where you can basically do anything um, has all these custom things. So this is my one little assignment for you to see how a custom designer uh, works in Finale. So let's do it. So we'll go to the note and we're gonna go back to the articulation tool and we're gonna click over it because there isn't one that exists and we're gonna click create. And then we're gonna to go to where it says symbols main and we're gonna work with a shape. And then we're gonna click main. And there's some symbols already designed here. You can see I've designed ours many times, but we're gonna do it again. <laughs> um, the one we need doesn't exist in, the, in a brand new version of Finale. So we're gonna click create again here. And it takes us into this thing called the shape designer. This is where you can you can go nuts. You can create anything you want for whatever score you ever might want. <laughs> We're going to base ours off of, there's actually font symbols that already have these, so we don't have to like draw them, although you could if you wanted to. If you want to go crazy hand done, you could. But uh, we're going to click on the font tool. And then we're going to use a font to select font Maestro. So it, Maestro font is the font that already has these symbols. If you're on a Mac, uh, we're going to go up to Shape Designer and um, in the menu, and we're going to do Select Font. 
Uh, sometimes some PCs have this font menu right up here in the top of this box. So if you can't find the font thing here uh, and you're on a PC, look for it up here in, in this area. Okay, so select font and we're gonna click, uh, you'll have to go down and click Maestro and we're gonna select 16 point. Uh, that's just what I found is a readable size. So just go with that. You can test it out on your own projects, but that's just, I already figured it out and that's what works for this one. So now click in the white space. This is the designer space. Uh, and we're gonna enter the pound sign. That's actually the sound, sign for sharp. Then uh, click anywhere else and enter a capital T. So shift T and that'll give us the turn. So remember we need it to look like a little sharp with a turn above it. So we'll go to this selection tool in the shape designer and we'll kind of move it around. This gives us sort of the, the target place. You gotta click in the white space to reselect each thing each time. So, all right, there we go. It's looking pretty good. Click okay, then click select, then click okay. And now we have our new shape made and click select and there we have it. Custom designed articulation, yay. <laughs> okay, let's talk about slurs. These are in a different tool called the shape designer. It's the crescendo with a slur over it. Uh, slurs, you can, if you're only doing two notes, you can simply double click the first one and it'll slur um, one note. If you're doing a whole group, uh, let's say here, you wanna double click and drag and you can see how it um, goes to the note I want it to go to. So that's for slurs. Uh, in the last uh, measure here of the fourth system, I want to show you this breaking the beam thing again that we already uh, did. This beam needs to break, so I'm going to go to the note after and push the backslash. That's one spot. Uh, and this is just, let me, if I go to the score over here, this is just a spot you can see uh, where the beam is broken. This is for like a, a piano kind of thing that's going on. Let's look at this second to last line. There is a thing we got to do where the bottom line has, this is actually in its own layer. So what we're going to do is go into speedy and we're going to go to layer two. Remember we did this in our corral. I'm going to simply enter rests for the first beat. So I don't need that. And then I'm going to do an eighth rest and then um, we need this eighth note on this needs to be a dotted half. There we go. <laughs> so you'll see if if you enter it, you will get two rests and it'll look kind of might look kind of funny. You can see there's actually two of them. So to hide a rest you, or to hide anything uh, in a layer that you don't want to be seen, you simply push H, H as in hide. So I'm gonna hide that and I'm, I'm gonna hide both the rests in layer two. And I'm not, I goofed up. I'm not gonna hide, don't hide layer one. I accidentally, and I wanna pull that back. There we go. So you'll see um, it's hidden if it'll look like it's faded a little bit. So hide the stuff you don't wanna see. Same thing for the next measure. If I go to layer two and enter this quarter note, it's gonna put, do you see how it kinda of drops the other rests I don't need? I'm just gonna push H over those. Uh, they'll be faded out in your score, but in a printout or in an export, they won't show up. So that's a very useful tool tool. Okay, there's a, some courtesy accidentals in this um, measure down here in the second to last line. You'll see 
Uh, we want to show, for example, how this B flat carries over. So courtesy accidental is just shift eight over the note that you want it to show. And then this one, I think I should say natural. I actually didn't have that in. There we go. Oh, but I don't want it to show on the D. There we go. Okay, ties on chords. So you'll see we have some ties with chords. If you want all of the notes to tie, uh, push the car entry carrot over the note in speedy and then use the arrows to take the entry point outside of the chord and then you push equals and can't see it very well until you click out but it'll tie all of them be careful not to if you if you have it over just one of the notes I accidentally bumped that one if you have it over just one of the notes it'll only tie that one note <laughs> so you want to take the entry point all the way out so it's not uh, tied to anyone in particular, and then that will make it tie all of them. There are some cases, especially in guitar writing, where you might want to have one note of a chord restruck. So like, let's say if I wanted this G to be restruck, I could go right over the G and push the equal sign, and you see it takes the tie off just for that one. So there is a way to individually control, but in this one, I think all the chords are have all the notes tied. So just be sure to take the entry point outside of the chord and then tie it. Uh, okay, the clef change. So that's up here. Uh, this is a very easy thing to do. You just go to the symbol that looks like a bass clef. It's called the clef tool. And you click in the measure and Actually, I would suggest you click all four of the measures. There's four measures that are actually in treble clef for a minute. So you can see there's a clef change here, four measures. So just go ahead and select those four. And then when you have the clef tool selected, you can double click. And we're gonna change to treble clef, measures five through eight, and then click okay. Then you can go ahead and enter your notes um, as is, and it'll just change the clef for only those four, four measures. You can see there's a courtesy clef taking you back to bass clef. Uh, text tool. I thought I would just show this in case you want to add. There isn't a way to add this subtitle in when you set up your document. So there's a tool called the text tool and you'll see it creates little boxes for the text. So you can just click on these uh, little boxes and then enter your text if you want to edit. You can likewise, um, you know, create a text box if you want uh, to customize. So thought I would just show that for a score setup. All right, the final item is Roman numerals. So this is for all of you taking music theory, uh, ever having to show Roman numerals with finale. It's a really nice clean way to show it. So um, I'll show you how to enter these. I just entered these by hand and then because um, I was working off of an engraved score that didn't have it, but I want you to enter it uh, in finale. So uh, what you're going to do, we're going to use the lyrics tool because again, there's a font for Roman numerals, which is pretty cool. So click on the lyrics tool and then open the lyrics window. We're going to open that window and uh, we'll go ahead and just enter our first Roman numeral which down here you can see is just a, a Roman numeral one for the one chord. So we'll just click right underneath there and just enter capital capital I and let's go ahead and enter the second chord in the set to the, the four chord. So I just push the space bar to get over to the four chord. Let's just enter those two so far. What we're gonna do is we're gonna change the font to be a Roman numeral font, basically. So to do that, you wanna go into this font window and select 
these that we entered because you can't actually select them as font in the score. Um, you got to select them over here to be able to change the font. And we'll go up in the menu to text font and scroll down and you want to find finale numerics. So this is our, our Roman numerals. And um, select it again. I want you to work with 14. It's a little bit easier to read. So finale numerics 14. That looks pretty good in the score. All right, so then we keep, uh, we'll click back in the score and um, I'll show you how to enter uh, some of these uh, other things. So we want to have a 1, 6 for the next chord. So you enter, enter a 1. And then to get the uh, 6, let me put this down here so we can see our directions. To get the 6 to show up, you push Shift 6. So let's go back. I'll enter 1 and then Shift 6. Yay, it puts a little six. Isn't that awesome? Uh, the next chord is two six. And enter lowercase, because two chord is a minor chord. So lowercase i, and then shift six, two six. Uh, next one is a five chord, so uppercase v. And then space bar, and then i. Woohoo! Doesn't that look cool? To get rid of these word extensions, we don't need those. Let's click here in the lyrics tool. This is the word extension edit tool. You can click on this little box here and just click delete on all of these and it'll get rid of those. Then to start entering again, go back to the type into score. Let's do some more complicated ones. Let's see, there is, let's go to the third line. And um, I don't actually have the notes entered, so you're gonna have to watch me enter some notes really quick here so that we can do this. See how fast the professor can enter some notes. <laughs> Okay, there we go. Have my little Alberti bass pattern. That's what's, that is what that's called. So this first chord is that we need to enter is on beat two, and it is a uh, five of four. It's a secondary dominant chord to be technically precise. So to get that um, slash, uh, we're gonna type five, and you can just do slash four. That works great. Uh, but there's another chord that has a slash down here. This chord in the next line is a five diminished seven over four. Or sorry, seven diminished seven. So seven uh, I didn't talk about diminished yet. Diminished, you push shift plus K. And then to get go over one spot again, you're gonna push the tilde. That allows you to stay in the same position. So let me do that one again. So seven. Shift K for diminished, it's the little round symbol. And then tilde, which is the key right next to number one on your keyboard. Push that, oops, whoa, the computer went crazy. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> you gotta make sure you're pushing tilde in finale, not in something else that does something cool, I don't know. Uh, then shift seven. Then to Additionally, do a uh, slash chord now, a seven of six. We're going to push the tilde again to take us out of that position. Now we can push slash and six. So the tilde allows you to go in line uh, as you go. 
Okay, uh, let's go back up to this line. Now, if you want to have a second inversion chord as the 464, I'm going to type Roman numeral 4 and Shift 6. Then, if I push another number without pushing tilde or anything, it'll put the 4 underneath. So, let me do that one again. So, 4, Shift 6, and then uh, number 4 after that straight away. All right, that's probably the most detailed work you'll ever do. Uh, really good to know if you ever have to do it. I think my husband spent um, at least four or five hours trying to figure out <laughs> how to do this. So you can thank him for uh, showing me. He figured it out for his theory class. All right, great. So go back um, and, oops, I think I opened something, didn't want to open, quit. <laughs> don't want to see Photoshop. Okay, great. So I look forward to seeing this project. Uh, it's due a week from this Wednesday, and uh, we will see your project soon.